Jenny, and my husband Dominic and I bought this house and 26 acres in Nova Scotia last year. We want to turn this wooded lot into pasture that we eventually would like to move livestock through. Um, we're hoping sheep and then possibly cows in the future. But right now, it's not ready for that. This is where having pigs comes in. We're gonna take our pigs and we're gonna run them through this wooded lot and we're going to be doing that in sections and every time they go through a section they're going to take the ground and they're going to tear it up they're going to come in here they're going to till up the ground piece by piece and dominic is going to go behind them and he's going to spread seed so next year when a lot of these trees are gone the ground has been tilled by the pigs and seed has been spread we're hoping to see some beautiful grass so this week we received our pigs well and we are over the moon, but we still have a lot of work to do. Dominic is still going through the woods to make sure that our perimeter fencing is done. We've got a long list of things to do. Very busy week. Hate brace is first thing today. Pound the last posts in. Then I'm gonna go around and see how many I need to saw off and attach the trees. I'm gonna do that. And then all I'm going to be waiting for for the fence is to get my electric, my energizer hooked up, my underwater, underground cable over to hook it on. But I can't do anything, I can't do that yet. I don't have what I need. So uh, after I do that today, then I'm going to pound posts in the garden where we're going to sequester the pigs. I'm trying to hatch a plan on what to do with the compost. I might leave the compost in with the pigs, let them dig through it, mix it into the ground and stuff for us. I think that might help because the compost is not finishing fully for me. And I think it's fine if we dig it in and then we put our load of topsoil manure on top for growing. One second, buddy. Uh, so I'm gonna make that pin today, hopefully. I'm just gonna about three feet uh, high of longers, enough to keep the pigs in. And then we're gonna be able to run our electric fence through there to train the pigs to the wire. Uh, and then once we have them in there for a bit and they've been trained, it won't be too far to drag them from over there drag it into our fenced in area then, which I'll have fully completed at that point. Cage brace, post it. Sawed off, timeless post attached to the trees I sawed off to pig, temporary pig area. I'm not gonna get all that done today probably, but uh, that's the checklist for today and tomorrow. And uh, actually building the actual shelter for the pigs too. Yep, so get busy. Um, so we're just going to check on the chicks. We've had them since Friday, so it's been it's been five days, and they're doing really well. We haven't lost any, so um, we suspected that, well, we thought that within the first 96 hours, you're, you're expected to lose 10%. Um, I don't know if that's the case here, but that's what we've heard in other places. Um, but we haven't lost any. They were pretty hardy when we got them. They looked really good. Um, so, eh, it's great. We're super happy. So uh, you can see that the fence line goes down this way and I have a tree marked out there that I'm going to be using. So that tree right there is what I'm going to be using for a fence post. The fence line is going down this way and as you can see it'll, if you would go straight in from the post, you'll see that that tree is in the line with them. So that tree is what I'm going to be using as uh, a nice strong post for that area because it kind of turns and goes down a hill there a little bit or it dips after that so um that's going to be uh, something that won't pull up or down for me so i'm going to be sawing the uh sawing the top off of that tree so it doesn't blow over or is less likely well it won't blow over if it's sawed off then i'm going to attach one of these white posts directly to it and i'm um, hoping that's going to be an excellent solution for the problem of how do i get over the top of the hill with these timeless posts without the ones downhill from it getting pulled up from the tension on the uh on the wire so this is the tree here, and I'm going to try to fall it that way. Most likely, it's going to come back this way and break the camera, but we'll see. Direct opposite direction of where I wanted it to go. But it didn't land on my tool bag, so I'll take that as a 
moral victory. Okay, so before I uh, clean up the tree I just knocked over, I'm gonna fix the post here. Just show you how I'm planning to do that and how we're just hoping for the best. These Thomas posts come with a tag on them there. And that tag tells you to the top of the tag is where you're supposed to drive them in. And that's the 18 inches that you need to get it in there. So my plan is to cut it off right there and affix it to the tree stump that's there uh, as low to the ground as I can get it. And then I'll still have my approximate six inch clearance there. Maybe, yeah, it's about, looks a bit bigger than six inches, but I'm sure it's right. So it'll be about six inches from the tag to the hole. And then the wire will still be at the right level for the posts that have already been driven. All right, so that's the plan. I'll be the guinea pig to see if this works out and someone else can give it a try later. It looks pretty smooth here already. <clears throat> the part where I'm, gonna, where I'm gonna be putting the post already looks pretty smooth, so. I don't need to shave off any knots or anything like that. So that's great. These little bits that are left over. I'm hoping these are, I'm gonna save these. I think these will come in handy for um, places where there's a big dip. I could just poke it in the ground halfway, drill a hole through the top here, and like peel off a wire off the bottom electrified wire through a couple of these and then back up and that'll take care of any big dips that I'm worried about. Um, yeah, I think that's what I've been thinking in my head. I think that'll work. There won't be any tension on it to pull them out of the ground or anything. So I think that's what's, uh, what the plan might be for that. But we'll see how that works out for me. All right, so I've drilled in the holes alternating so every two holes, you can see the see them drill through the back there. So every two holes, um, so I drill one there, then I alternate it, skip two holes, skip two holes, skip two holes. And um, when I drill them in, I'm gonna drill them in into the center, in towards the center. So <clears throat> the strategy is crossing them will obviously make them resist the pull out a bit better. And having them directly in between the holes, if I'm running my wire through there, there should be no chance of, no probability of contact with the screw, fooling anything up. Hey, found my safety glasses. All right, so I'm gonna get this put on, see how sturdy it feels. And uh, hopefully it's gonna work out really well for me. I'm hoping. I mentioned that uh, cutting the tree off obviously is going to make it not uh, blow over, taking the whole fence with it. But also as the tree grows, obviously it gets wider. You know, in the case that this actually stays up for 20 years, a tree could get quite a bit wider, pushing everything out of line, you know. So if I was going to put it on a living tree, I'd probably just like ratchet strap it on or do some kind of a tightening around the tree so it could still grow out and then not grow over the post. That's basically it. That's the strategy. I'm hoping it's gonna be a great strategy that helps out a lot. Uh, I don't think I got it on there perfect, but this is my first one, so hopefully it'll get better as it goes. I'm seeing that there's a bit of gap in the bottom, so perhaps I should have taken the chainsaw and shaved off the roots a little bit. Maybe I'll do that on the next one. But I think it'll pull through okay. It's not perfectly uh, on this side, I don't think, but uh, it's kind of hard to do a little bit with a round tree and some knots and stuff around, so. Um, I'm gonna still put in a couple. They're not going all the way in, but uh, I think they'll help. They won't hurt. All right, so that ended up being one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws, which was the what I thought in my head. I thought that's what it was gonna be, so I think I'm pretty happy with how that worked out in uh, the preliminary stage. So we'll see now how it actually works in practice once I run some wire through there. So for the tree that I just knocked down, uh, I'm going to limit here now. And I'm going to leave it piled up on this side of the fence, probably where there's a couple of dips further down. And uh, just this kind of like a natural barrier. I'm hoping that when the pigs are in here, if they're poking around and there's a low po point that is a little bit less secure, they're going to see the trees piled up and they're going to feel discouraged and they're not going to want to poke around in there anyway. So I'm not gonna put them so close to the fence that they'll touch the wires and, and short it or, or ground out a little bit. 
but I'll put it there so it's a visual barrier that the pigs will say, okay, I'm not going to go over there anyway because uh, there's a pile of stuff there that I wouldn't want to walk through. So I don't know if it shows up well on camera, but there's a bit of a dip right there. Maybe like right there where I'm worried the string is going to get a little bit high. There's the over here where you see the raised the stumps and stuff. And then down here where you see the stumps and stuff, there is a bit of a depression there. So uh, I don't think it's low enough that the pigs will get out anyway, but I'm hoping to create this visual cue here for the pigs that there's going to be all kinds of brush here. It's not going to be a nice place to walk out anyway. Now, maybe, I don't know pigs very well, so maybe they're going to be like, woohoo, brush pile. That's what I'm thinking. I read a book about silvopasture and how a guy used all the roots he dug up to make like a natural wall. So I know it's not going to be as good as a whole wall of roots, but uh, hopefully it's enough to just, you know, visually discourage. Hopefully the pig that's down at this level is going to get right here. The fence will be right here. fence will be right straight here so with this little dip hopefully they're going to see all this stuff in the way but to me it looks like the wire is still only going to be this high because this next post is down downhill a little bit so the pig I, I think it's fine anyway however let's say the fence is off and I'm just so unlucky that they test it right here because it's lower they might say you know maybe I won't Plus it's got to go somewhere and it's better on the outside of the fence than on the inside because if it's on the inside, the pigs, when they're pushing it around and stuff, they could push a big pile onto the fence and ground it out. Now we got a pretty massive energizer for the length of fence we have. So hopefully we got lots of electricity, even if that should happen, but uh, we're going to have to keep an eye on it too. So, so. This is a corner tree. So the fence is coming from that way. So if I was going to line up perfectly with that fence, I'd put the I'd put the timeless post right here. Odd sounding bird, I don't know if you guys could hear that. Uh, then if I was going the other way towards the other fence, I'd put it here. So I'm gonna try and see if I can do the corners with one on the corner. I know it's gonna be really hard to pull the wire through. So maybe I'll do my tightenings here, I don't know. Um, but I'm gonna run around the corner. I'm gonna use one post on the corner like this so I can hopefully pull a 90 degree turn here um, and just use one post. <coughs> Pretty strong. <coughs> Doesn't move when I push on it, so. I reckon that's gonna be okay, I'm hopeful. All right, I'm gonna stop recording because that pretty much sums it up. I'm just gonna circle around the property real fast. So while the perimeter fencing is essential, we don't actually need it finished before the pigs arrived. As you can tell, it's not done yet. The more pressing thing that we had to do was make sure that they had shelter when they arrived. So I'm gonna show you how we did the shelter, introduce you to the pigs, and then I'm gonna tell you why we didn't need to have the fencing done right away. Like maybe not super long, but yeah, long enough. For long me. enough between that and the screw, it'll get in there. Yeah. Hey Dominic, what are you doing today? But not a hundred percent sure. <laughs> Making a little pig palace. <laughs> pig palace. Yeah. We're nice. just discussing our plans. I think we've got a plan where we're going to make it, with the assumption it's going to be too heavy. So we're going to make it if we're not eaten to death by flies or oh, carried off. Terrible! Oh my God. Um, I'm a little shaky because I'm throwing bad flies away. We're gonna make it in a way that if it doesn't, Mom, uh, like work out, works out that it's too heavy to drag around, we can cut it in half in strategic locations, and then drag it around as two separate pieces so that it'll, uh, we can take it apart, move it to the next part of the woods that we're putting the pigs in, and then put it back together every time. So, but we're hoping that you're gonna be strong enough to lift it when it's in one piece. Very good. That's the hope. So I gotta work out. We're gonna add wheels to the back of it. 
going to get some wheels out of the back woods. Version two. The wheels are out. <laughs> the wheels are over here now. They're just still attached to the remnants of the lawnmower. <laughs> so, but I, I don't. I think they'll crack with that much weight. Go ahead. Uh, I don't want to go right to the edge. Great, actually, it's going a lot faster than I thought it would be. I thought this would be a finished more type job, but if we can get that roof on tonight, I'll be very impressed. And we are maybe three hours from sunset, so I'm just going to assume Scott has no, nothing else to do. We'll get this in a, one hour. All right, so you want to measure it? Thanks, brother. No problem. For a cabin for the kids. <laughs> yeah, for the winter. Winter chalet. like it in there do they yeah that's the hay i put the light i'll put the hay out instead of straw i don't know if the pigs are going to want to eat it or whatever but here's my built for the purpose this is what it's made for is a handle <laughs> this squirt gun i need to buy handles or come up with a way to make some or one or the other i could drill a hole through some of that pvc maybe and then just put like an eye hook on the end. Mm -hmm. Extendable, right? Yeah, I like that clicking sound. And then you just need to, if you need that to shorten up, it's just, you pull this purpose-built trigger. <laughs> so look at the words up here. Yeah. So that's gonna be the handle for now. She's face and eyes right in the dirt. They are, as you can see, they're already rooting. They're hitting, so we're training them now for the fence. There's two wires on the inside. If you see them touch it, they'll squeal and run away. So we're hoping that sooner rather than later, that's not gonna happen. And they're gonna be trained to not go near the edge and to stay within the pen. Okay guys, so that is it. If you have any questions about our fencing situation, about rotating them through the woods, 
Um, definitely leave those down in the comments. We've never done this before, so we don't really know what we're doing, but we are really excited to learn about it. And if you have any questions about the breed of pigs, because I am going to be talking about that, because um, I've never heard them before until we got this breed of pig. We're going to be talking about that next time. And you can leave all those questions out in the comments or DM me on Instagram, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye, guys. Thank you.